This is a News 10 Stormwatch Alert. Yes, indeed. Surf's up today. All along the Jersey coast, the nor'easter has hit heavy rain, high winds. And there's already storm damage to assess. The wind is to blame for the collapse of a gas station roof in Cape May Courthouse. And, of course, high tide trouble up and down the Jersey coast. Flooding a problem. Live reports headed your way. Well, good morning and welcome to a busy Thursday and News 10 Today. I'm Connie Cola. And I'm Steve Levy. It's 5 o'clock, Thursday morning, February the 5th. Let's get you a check of the roadways and the traffic this morning. To the traffic center, Mark Davies, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Connie. The folks that are affected most by this, folks around the coastal areas affected by flooding. We are dealing with high winds closer to the Philadelphia city, city itself. Keep in mind the Jersey Turnpike has a speed restriction. Let's look at the Ben Franklin Bridge. You get an idea of the high winds moving through. Flag blowing pretty stiffly there. And again, keep in mind the Jersey Turnpike, a motorcycle and trailer ban in effect the length. Speed restrictions across some of the area bridges as well. In the News 10 Metro Traffic Center, I'm Mark Davies for News 10. Now let's check your forecast. Here's Bill Henley in the Weather Center. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Mark. Hey, no speed restrictions on the wind today, and that's the problem with the storm. It's a big windstorm, and really the only place it's going to cause some real trouble is down the shore with flooding. Other than that, we may see some down tree limbs and that sort of thing around the rest of the area. The windstorm will be with us through this afternoon and be winding down tonight. Our forecast is calling for wet and windy day. There's not a lot of rain with this storm. Actually, most of it's light. But with the strong winds, at times it feels like it's coming down really hard. Winds will be out of the northeast in Philadelphia from 20 to 30 miles an hour. Down the shore, we've seen wind gusts of around 50 miles an hour. Next high tide is the most likely time we could see some flooding, and that'll be this afternoon between 2.30 and 3 o'clock. Steve Connick. Well, Bill, because of that, that is our top story for this day, the second nor'easter in two weeks hitting the Jersey Shore right now. And as Bill just talked about, high winds and heavy rain are combining with the high tide to cause some flooding and other problems. Keeping an eye on the precarious situation down the shore is News 10's Christine Perez, live in Ocean City. How's it look out there, Christine? Well, Connie, Ocean City is getting a pounding at this time. It has been getting a pounding all through the night. High tide here was between 1 and 2 o'clock in the morning, and as you can see, it is pretty windy out here. Wind are gusting between 30 to 40 miles an hour. Now the winds combined with high tide have created flooding in the community. Street lights and signs in Ocean City are barely standing. 53 mile an hour winds combined with high tide have pushed ocean waters onto major thoroughfares like 9th Street, flooding homes in the front bay and most of the streets west of West Avenue. Right now, both access bridges to Ocean City are closed. So you, if you're on the island, you have to remain on the island for a while. Can't get out. Got to be in work at 3.30 this morning and I can't get there. Emergency management officials say this nor'easter is the worst they've seen in seven years. The National Guard has evacuated close to 15 people from their flood-ravaged home this morning, including Crystal Valentine and her two children. I called the police. They came to the house and they picked us up. But the water is definitely like waist high, at least waist high. So far, police say there are no injuries, but a number of homes and cars have been damaged, and there seems to be no end in sight. Based on the forecast that we have right now, this high tide that we're experiencing will not go back out during low tide. Um, in addition, the northeast wind is, is forecast to continue throughout Thursday. So right now, we are anticipating some problems with the Thursday afternoon tide. The best advice right now is to stay inside your homes if you are on the roads and you shouldn't be on the roads is to avoid uh, barricaded roads. Don't go on those roads. Any roads covered with water. Now, a uh, shelter has been set up at the Ocean City High School. Schools today remain closed here in Ocean City. And we're told that uh, they're hoping to open at least one of the bridges into the island between 8 and 9 o'clock this morning. Live in Ocean City, Christine Perez. News 10. Christine, I know you've been there all through the night. Does it feel like this is the worst of it so far? You know, I think the worst of it was between uh, midnight and 1 o'clock. Uh, you could hear the wind uh, all through the night. I could hear it all through the night. And as you heard uh, the emergency management officials say, uh, they're expecting a lot of problems later on this afternoon. But the worst of the storm, I would say, is probably behind us at this time. But we are still getting a lot of winds out here and the best advice is to stay indoors and of course the officials here are waiting for daybreak to assess the damage, Connie. 
Christine, you also said that they're going to open one of the two access bridges into Ocean City. Uh, the assumption would be that's the 9th Street Bridge because it's much higher. Uh, but maybe by the next time we come back, you can check and see which bridge they hope to open up. Exactly. That is the assumption at this time, but they haven't told us which, which one. And, you know, a lot of people were saying that none of the access roads would be open until 2 o'clock this afternoon. But they're hoping to open at least one. We don't know which one, as you said, 9th Street would be the possible one, Steve. All right, Christine, we'll be checking back okay. with you, of course, 2 o'clock this afternoon, which you just mentioned is the next time of high tide to 2.30, so we'll be checking. Absolutely. Well, an Atlantic City emergency management team has been up all night, just as Christine has, keeping an eye on this storm. As the rain fell and high winds whipped up the surf, officials braced for the very worst down the shore. There has been a declaration of emergency, so we have special powers and we're eligible for federal reimbursement. As you've seen, we have the National Guard out there to help get emergency people to and from places they couldn't otherwise get. And floodwaters did surround the Atlantic City Beachfront nursing home last night. Luckily, that home was evacuated on Tuesday night, as you'll remember. Officials expect more flooding in Atlantic City as another high tide approaches between 2 and 3 this afternoon. And this is the scene in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. The wind is so strong that it blew the roof off the gas station there. In Ocean City, New Jersey, the barricades blocking the streets have sandbags on them so that they won't blow away. And emergency rescue teams are standing by along the Jersey Shore ready to help anyone who gets stranded in this storm. Now, of course, they're recommending that you stay in your house and don't go to work. That, of course, affects the kids, too. And there are a lot of school closings at the Jersey Shore. For example, all public and parochial schools in Atlantic City, Ocean City, Sea Isle, Cape May, North Wildwood have been closed for the day. And in Wildwood, the St. Anne's School has also been closed. Now, what about the state of Delaware? A lot of coastline there getting pounded from the nor'easter this morning, too. Let's show you a couple of scenes. This one last night. Traffic lights twisting in the wind. Our cameras saw this in downtown Wilmington, but of course, throughout the area, much the same. A lot of those signals were left dangling. And here in Center City, Philadelphia, you will see the same thing. Down street light here at Broad and Race last night in Center City. The rain gear was a little bit of a problem, wasn't it? Well, the winds are going to be gusting up to, as Bill said, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, depending on where you are, and they've already had big one, bigger ones down the shore. This is also in Center City, 11th and Winter, some scaffolding blown off the side of a construction site, perched just above some power lines there. The Pico crews and the police and fire crews took care of it. We don't have any word of any injuries from that. Well, there is other news to report to you this morning. A
Top of the morning, everyone. Half past the hour on Thursday morning, the 5th of February. And we thank you for joining us here at the Weather Channel. I'm Bruce Edwards. This is Vivian Brown. Good morning. As we watch storms slam the east and west coast. And we've got a little bit of wet weather into Texas and white weather as well. But today is a very special day for us here. It's Weatherman's Day or mm. Weather Person's Day. <laughs> uh, John Jeffries uh, was a physician up in Boston. And he was one of the first ones to make uh, rec readings and record these readings and start keeping an almanac of weather statistics. And and it became known as the, the first weatherman, so today was his birthday. Oh. And so that's why they celebrate Weatherman's Day today. Speaking of birthdays, it's also birthdays for a couple of sports stars of uh, days gone by. Uh, Roger Staubach for the Cowboys, her star quarterback, has a birthday today. And Henry Aaron, the home run king of all time, mm -hmm. celebrating his 64th birthday today. Okay, happy birthday, Hank mm -hmm. Aaron and uh, Roger Staubach. Roger Staubach. And Red uh, Buttons, and red the buttons. comedian. Yeah, just like Red. Yeah. Red's got a birthday, too. <laughs> okay. If it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. A wild weather pattern building across most of the country. Of course, the last couple of days we've been talking about our eastern storm, and we've had some very heavy rain and locally heavy snow, too. Here's a look at some of the rainfall totals. Virginia Beach topping the list. Over six inches of rain we've had at Virginia Beach, Roanoke, Virginia, over two and a half inches, Columbia, South Carolina, over two inches, D.C., over an inch and a half, and even Baltimore, over an inch and a half. Now, not only the rain, but the snow amounts have been impressive, too. Finzel, Maryland, that's in Garrett County, the western part of the state, 20 inches of snow. Cincinnati, Ohio, you picked up about a foot. Lexington, Kentucky, nearly a foot with 11 inches. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, a couple of inches. Punxsutawney Phil, the Pennsylvania groundhog, said it wasn't over yet. He prognosticated six more weeks of winter, and it certainly looks as though winter is still in full force across parts of the Northeast as our storm system lifts up the coast. Now, it's basically located off the coast here of North Carolina this morning. You can see the swirl with it, but just a broad area of moisture being pulled back from the Atlantic and spreading over colder air we have here in Ohio. We still have reports of snow, parts of Ohio this morning, western Pennsylvania, including Pittsburgh this morning. It is snowing. It's it's generally rain right along the immediate coast, but the winds have been really, really rough this morning. We've had winds out of the northeast in excess of 30 and 40 miles an hour. New York City at LaGuardia, we have northeast winds gusting up to 39 miles an hour this morning. And a blustery over parts of the southeast as well, northern Georgia and the Carolinas. Generally, you have a northwesterly wind flow. And then we're watching our next upper level low as it pushes across Texas. We have reports of snow around Lubbock and Amarillo this morning. And then another area of low pressure will develop here in the western Gulf of Mexico. So it's going to eventually spread moisture over the Gulf Coastal region. Uh, thunderstorms expected later today for you if you're in Houston and clouds will build over the New Orleans area. So storm system number one, of course, that we've been watching the last couple of days here. This is storm system number two and storm system number three, spreading the clouds and moisture over the northern parts of California this morning. We even have some lighter rains over the Pacific Northwest. Here's the way it looks right now, our weak trough of low pressure coming in, but this is just uh, the one today, but over the next six days or so, we're talking about one storm after another coming into the West Coast. So really, really some problems out West. You know, we've had reports of uh, major flooding in parts of California already, and it looks as though there is no relief, at least for the next five to six days, in terms of dry weather for the West Coast. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's check out the temperatures over the Northeast because, as mentioned, we do have moisture being pulled back from the Atlantic, but where the air is cold enough, we have snow this morning from Belleville, Illinois, over to uh, parts of the eastern Great Lakes area, even central Ohio around Pittsburgh. It's 33 degrees, but we do have reports of some light snow in the Pittsburgh area this morning. 37 right now, Philadelphia, so the precipitation is in the form of rain. We have 36 right now in New York. York, 
33 in Boston. Here's a look at the radar now. All of this is generally snow, an additional one to three inch accumulations expected. So uh, still kind of wintry like across this region up towards central Ohio, Zanesville, Youngstown, Mansfield reporting snow this morning. We have the snow in West Virginia from Morgantown down to Charleston and again some light snow in the Pittsburgh area this morning. It has changed over to rain though in Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, our nation's capital. Hartford, we've had reports of some freezing rain this morning, so it's just right along the immediate coast that rain has been found, but you go a little ways inland, say to Avoca, Pennsylvania, and even around Poughkeepsie, and it's starting to change over to sleet and freezing rain, so really a mess this morning across the northeast. Winds out of the northeast in excess of 30, 40 miles an hour. We do have marine advisories in effect for the area, heavy surf advisories, as well as coastal flood advisories, as again, winds come in from the Atlantic, just battering the coast here. So not the best of Thursdays, that's for sure, over the east. Now out west, you can see the moisture coming in with our trough of low pressure in California, and gale advisories have been issued for the northern California coast all the way to the Olympic Peninsula. So there's the big picture the way it stands right now. Let's get a quick look at the forecast. And with all the details, here's Bruce. All righty, we got it coming your way, starting it off. Once again, this afternoon at midday, we will see the storm system starting to pull on out, but still bringing some wind and some rain and some ice and snow, unfortunately, to the mid-Atlantic states. That'll continue to work its way towards the coast, while the low pressure forming here will bring the rain to central and south Texas, while west Texas and up to Colorado will see some snow. And here comes another big system slamming into northern California with significant wind and rain and snow. So it's going to get dicey, to say the least. But here we'll have most of the northeast quarter in the rain, a little bit of ice, and then some lighter snows back up to the north. Still windy over the southeast. The rains taper off in the Carolinas, but it gets soggy in Houston, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio, and very wet in the west. Following Atlantic City, where a high tide has left a definite mark there. In